Hello and welcome to the France Van Kat interview. My guest today is the Ukrainian journalist and activist Mustafa Nayem, or perhaps really I should say my host, because we're doing this interview in the studios of the online TV channel of which he is a co-founder, Romadske TV, which started broadcasting ahead of schedule when protests uh, against the government erupted in Ukraine last November and very quickly became one of the go-to news sources for coverage of those protests. But Mustafa is perhaps better known as the man whose Facebook post uh, started the whole thing off. This was back on the 21st of November. Ukraine's government, uh, to widespread surprise, announced that it would not, after all, be signing a planned association agreement with uh, the European Union. This went against what uh, President Viktor Yanukovych had been saying he would do since he was elected in 2010. And according to opinion polls, it went against the wishes of the majority of the Ukrainian people. And so Mustafa posted on Facebook, guys, are you willing to go down into the street and protest about this? Sure enough, a few hours later, a thousand people gathered on Independence Square in central Kiev. The following day, there were a few more. The following day, the 23rd of November, there were a few more. And then on the 24th of November, there was the first mass demonstration, bringing nearly 50,000 people to the streets of Kiev to protest and to demand that Viktor Yanukovych sign this agreement. But he didn't. He went to the summit in Vilnius and didn't sign the document. And a week later, the demands of the protesters had uh, moved on. They were now demanding for his resignation. What ensued has been the biggest uh, wave of protests in Ukraine since the Orange Revolution in 2004, with uh, hundreds of thousands of people taking to the streets uh, at the peak times on Sundays. Mustafa, how do you feel uh, nearly eight weeks later about what you started? How's it, how's it gone? <clears throat> you know, actually, I. I I don't feel that I've started something because it was, it was not fear to say that I started something. It just was this movement. Uh, it was planned by society. It was planned by opposition parties. So it just was my f maybe post that provoked first people to go outside. But it was not something that I launched or planned or to do something. It was occasion. I, I think uh, for all people who are now staying in the Maidan during these two months, changed everything. I mean, even in personal life, in uh, society, and uh, what's going on in Maidan. Because uh, two months ago, if you would say someone that we will have demonstration with which we'll gather hundreds of thousands, we will, no one we will uh, believe you. Yes, you said that you spoke, I think, on the 21st of November to uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, who's currently the leader of Yulia Tymoshenko's party while she's in prison, and he said to you, no one will take this. Yeah, it was evening, evening of this day when uh, Azarov told that they were stopped, Azarov interrupt this Prime preparing, a Prime Minister of Ukraine, yeah, that they interrupt this preparing for uh, signing of this agreement. And in that day, we asked yeah. Yatsenyuk why uh, he, he's not asking people go outside. And he was right saying that, you know, I don't believe. And because he had negative experience. And that's why I think that it's very, very good that not politicians started that process, but civil society. You know, I think the Yatsenyuk was not wrong. But he was right as a politician. If uh, Yatsenyuk were asked people to go outside that day, I don't believe that they will go outside. Because people doesn't believe a politician. So when they saw that it was not politician process, not politician protest, but people who never was involved in politician life, they go, go, went outside. But now uh, Arseniy Yatsenyuk, along with Vitaly Klitschko and Oleg Tsyanibok, the nationalist leader, have very much at least tried to take the lead in these uh, demonstrations. They are all the time on the stage on Independence Square, the Maidan. How do you feel about the way that they're handling it? I think it's, you know, it's big mistake to think that someone is leading this Maidan. And I think that Yatsenyuk and Klitschko or whatever who will be next president of Ukraine, they will be afraid of Maidan. It's very bad that uh, people outside Ukraine think that this is the leaders of Maidan. They are not leaders of Maidan. They are leaders of their politicians, politician parties. But Maidan is something very independent from politician life. But uh, when you speak to Ukrainians who aren't protesting on Independence Square, the Maidan, who are watching it on TV, the people they see on TV are these political leaders all the time, and they say, I'm not going to go out and protest for them. Do you sometimes think that Ukrainian civil society has made a mistake by allowing the political leaders to put themselves on show so much with this? No. I think... Uh, you know, the thing is that if 
we will have the same mistakes and wrong things we had in 2004. We will have another Yanukovych in seven years or in five years. Now it's very important to have new contract between civil society and politicians. And that's what is going on on the Maidan. So you think that the next uh, crop of politicians to be elected, even if they were corrupt and didn't do much in the past, this time they'll be under more pressure from the people and therefore will be more effective? Yes, <clears throat> first. And the second is that, you know, this is people, now the opposition in our new generation, not all of them, but Yatsenyuk is uh, not generation of Timoshenko or Yanukovych. Klitschko is not the same generation, even Tegnibok. He's not from that generation. And what's been your role um, exactly? In the early days, you were playing some kind of role in, in organizing and deciding when and where to demonstrate and so on. But since then, what, what have you been doing? I was responsible for this post and for those people, but not more. After 26th of uh, November, when I went to Vilnius, I stopped. There was uh, the Vilnius summit, uh, which was where Viktor Yanukovych was supposed to sign this deal with the European Union, but didn't. And uh, so after that, I'm not a member of any coordination councils, of any uh, agencies, of or any uh, bodies of these uh, protests. I'm a journalist. But these five days in my life, I, rem I will remember, f I think, till my end, because in one day you are doing something that you have never do before. For example, uh, we just feeding people or gathering volunteers or guarding the square, I'm a journalist, I'm not a politician, I can't do that. But I'm not, I was not alone, there was a lot of activists and I'm happy that, that these people was a big hope for this Maidan and they did a lot of things. Tell me about Hromadske TV, why um, have you and so many other prominent young Ukrainian journalists uh, decided to set up this new online channel? All journalists who are working here, uh, they worked before on the media which were which belonged to oligarchs, all politicians, and we know what is censorship, we know what is pressure of uh, owners, you know what is uh, to be not frank on, the, on, on, on life. And when appeared this initiative, we feel that first time in our life we can do something that, uh, that will not make us to think what is think our owner or our editor. We are just doing what we think and we believe each other. I also want to ask about you personally. You've been in Ukraine for as long as Ukraine's been independent, right, since 1991, but you were born in Kabul. How is it in Ukraine to be an Afghan Ukrainian who's in the public eye? Does everybody treat you as a Ukrainian just like any other or, or not? You know, um, I, I'm remembering about that I'm not Ukrainian only in conversation with someone because deep inside I don't feel that I'm, I'm not from Ukraine. It's because I bring up, brought up here with, by my parents. My parents are really from Afghanistan. And, uh, but I don't think that someone can say that I'm not Ukrainian. And in that context, how do you feel about the fact that Svoboda, the nationalist party, which is allied with xenophobic parties in Europe and uh, has an anti-immigration platform, is playing such a prominent role in these protests? Yes, it's true. And I think it's the biggest problem of Ukrainian opposition. Uh, first of all, it looks, you know, it's, there is something, something not normal in that where you're saying about your opinion, uh, values, and the same time you're beating gays or making this neo-Nazist uh, actions. So it's very strange for me. From the other side, I think it's very good experience for Ukrainian society to see what is going on and to understand these people. You know that they, uh, the poll ratings now is twice less than uh, two years ago. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because people who voted for Svoboda, they think that, thought that when Svoboda will enter, the, to enter to the parliament, they will have another face. They will be more civilized. But they are, this is street party, and this is, I know, it's not the European way, I think. But anyway, you see that this opposition, they're tolerant for this, and I think it's this illness that we will have Sometimes solved in some time. Sometimes it's a problem for the opposition. So. Yeah, the treatment is only one freedom of speech and saying about these people, showing them what are they and what, what, how, how they feel and how they think. Mm -hmm. Moving on, do you think that the government has a strategy against uh, the movement? Is, is the government worried about this movement? I mean, we've seen these uh, mysterious beatings, particularly of your colleague Tatiana Chernovil, 
Um, do you think that the government's behind that, as she says? We can't prove that Tatiana Chernovol was beaten by militia or by someone of them. But what we can prove is that we don't have reaction of government on these occasions. So after beating of Tatiana Chernovol, after beating of thousands of other people and hundreds of journalists, the responsibility of not punishing is on the government, not on the society, not on those who are beating. It's government's problem. And this is face of presidency of Viktor Yanukovych. So what's your prognosis for the next few weeks and months? What do you think is going to happen? Uh, you know, I think that we'll have a very bad year because uh, for Yanukovych it's very obvious that West will be on the side of opposition leader in the next election. The second thing is that uh, he has money from Russian. And the third thing is that he, he knows from uh, poll, poll ratings that he has no chance to win in 2015. If it's free and fair. Yeah. Uh, and all these three factors means that Yanukovych will act very straight and very hard against opposition. And I think we even don't imagine how straight and how hard he will do. So I think it will be a very bad year. But at the end of this, I believe this Maidan can solve this problem and solve this conflict between government and power. The thing is that many people compare Ukraine 2004 and 2015. It's two different countries because Kuchma, he has allowed him to, to lose. To lose, but Yanukovych, he has no chance to lose. He he, he has no this option at all. That's it. So 2014 could be a tough year, but also a very interesting year for Ukraine. We'll be following things closely here on France 24. But that's the end of this interview. Thanks very much to my guest Mustafa Nayem. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more news.